What we're going to be looking at here is a revision in depreciation rates or a change in estimate. Now depreciation expenses are only estimates and they may need to be revised during the life of the asset. So let's go look at our example here and this is just going to be a very basic example. We have a machine that we purchased here in year 20x06 at a cost of $104,000 and at that time we had an estimated life of eight years, salvage value of $8,000 here. Now we come back here five years later in year 20x11 here and we re revise the estimated life here to 10 years and uh, it change its salvage value here to $9,000. So what we have here is our uh, original estimated life here of 8 years is now uh, moved here to 10 years. We've revised that estimate here in its life and we also changed the value of its uh, salvage value here from $8,000 to $9,000. So what we have uh, to count for here is this uh, five year original five year period here and since we changed its life here from 8 years to 10 years we have an additional five years here that we have to account for and that's going to be uh, due to this change in estimate here. So let's look at our example here and what we're going to be uh, using is just the straight line method of depreciation and uh, let's just go and look at the calculations here. Uh, originally here we had a cost it would be our cost minus our salvage value a cost of 104,000 uh, salvage value of 8,000 divided by its life of eight years is going to give us a uh, straight line depreciation here of $12,000 per year. So let's go and look at our uh, calculations here. So remember we had this first five years that we have to account for here, years one through five. We originally estimated it to be eight years here but we we're only going to have used it five years here and then we've made our change in estimate. So uh, the remaining five years here we're going to we can go down here and look at that here. That's going to be the remaining five years here. We've used going to have used it for the first five years here, made our change in estimate and then we've got the next five years to count for and this uh, this is where we're going to come in with a different depreciation right here. So uh, again, let's let's look at our remaining five years here. So what we would do here is we take for the remaining five years we take the book value or the carrying value that we had after the first five years it's used here. In this case it's going to be 44,000 and then we take its new salvage value. We would subtract out its new salvage value from the book value here and then we divide it uh, by the remaining life here of five years. So we used up the first five years here and we have to account for the next five of those ten years so we have five years remaining in life. So uh, our straight line depreciation here is 44,000 here. Their book value, the carrying value here after five years uh, minus the new salvage salvage value of 9,000 divided by the remaining life here five years gives us $7,000 per year here depreciation on a straight line basis. So let's go up here and look at our schedules that I have set up here. So uh, first our straight line here for a year uh, starting here in 20x06 and again for eight years life we had that cost of 104,000 salvage here of 8,000 a life here of eight years and this is our depreciation schedule here. So what we've done here is we depreciated it uh, for these first five years here at $12,000 per year uh, and then our accumulated depreciation after this fifth year here is $60,000. And so our book value here we're going to determine to be $44,000. That's simply our cost here of $104,000 less our accumulated depreciation here of $60,000 leaves us with a book value here of $44,000. Now for our change in estimate, this is what we're going to be using here as our new uh, cost or our book value here when we set up our depreciation schedule. So we move this $44,000 down over here. That's our book value here. And then we have that salvage value here, our new estimate of $9,000. And then we have the remaining life that we have 10 years here. Uh, less the five years that we all, uh, had depreciated it there so it gives us five years here. So using our new uh, depreciation schedule here from years 20x11 through 20x15 we'd be depreciating it at, at $7,000 per year. So you can see our accumulative depreciation is going to come up to 35000 and then the book value here we reduce it by our depreciation amount that we have each year so we um, our book value eventually comes down to nine thousand dollars. That's our new 
salvage value here. So you can see here, uh, taking our starting out with our cost here of $104,000, and then subtracting here our first five years of depreciation of 60,000 here, and then for the next five years here, a depreciation at 35,000, we come up with our book value here or our carrying value at the end of this uh, 10th year here at $9,000. So let's just make the point here um, for this new depreciation here. Changes in subsequent periods, assuming a straight line method in this case, is determined by dividing the remaining book value here, less any salvage value, by the remaining estimated life. So you can see what we've done here. We've taken, uh, after this fifth year here, we've just taken that book value or the carrying value that we had here on that asset, and then we set up our new depreciation schedule based on that uh, book value here of 44,000, less its salvage value of 9,000 here, and divide it by the remaining life here of five years, and we're going to get a depreciation amount at $7,000 per year. So we've accounted for this first five years here, uh, depreciation and then we made that change in uh, uh, estimate here and we had to uh, account for the next five years in depreciation. Originally we had it set up here as our depreciation schedule for eight years but we made that change in estimate at the end of the fifth year here so we had to change our depreciation amount here and also that included the change here in the salvage value from 8,000 here or originally here at the end of eight years to 9,000 here at the end of actually the 10th year here. So let's go up and look at how we would record this here. Okay, so now we've purchased this asset here in 20XX and we have to account for our depreciation here from years 20XX here through 20X10 or we have the first five years here. So we would have credited our accumulated depreciation by that $12,000 per year here and then our depreciation expense we would have debited that here by $12,000 per year here and that's on our income statement our accumulated depreciations on our balance sheet and our uh, machine assets sitting here at its uh, cost here of $104,000. So what we want to bring away from this is no correcting entry is necessary because the changes in estimate are handled in the current and prospective periods and what we mean by the current and prospective periods is going to be those years 20x11 through 20x15 here. So what we've done here for these this original uh, five years here bef before we made that change, we do not change any previous reporting results. These sit on the books as they are here. We don't make any uh, changes to any previous results here or making any correcting entries. We just leave them as they are here for the, in this case, the first five years here, 20x6 through 20x10. Okay, now let's look at how we'd handle these uh, next five years here, 20x11 through 20x15. And of course, uh, we have our accumulated depreciation here, and that's for the second five years here. So we would have credited that here for the new depreciation amount here at 7000 per year here, and then we'd recognize it as a depreciation expense on our income statement here at $7,000 per year here. So you can just see, first five years, we recognize that depreciation at the first um, amount, that our uh, first uh, our original amount here at $12,000 per year. Then we made our change in estimate here at 20x11 and then we had to uh, change our depreciation rate here. So let's just go over that again here. For the change in depreciation, depreciation report the change in estimate in the current and future periods. Do not make any changes in previous re reporting results. Do not adjust the opening balances nor attempt to catch up for any prior periods. So our change is all reflected here in the current and future uh, future periods here, 20x11 through 20x15. And just to go up here one more time, again, uh, sitting on our books here, machine A was purchased in 20x6, that's sitting here, and then we had that accumulation for the first five years. No change here, no correcting entries, just leave them as they is, are here, just make your changes in the, in the current period here and the, the future periods here. All right. So that takes care of our how we would make our revisions here in depreciation rates and changes in estimates.